Hi folks, I'm Pastor Steve Herring, and it is Wednesday, the 27th of January, 2021, and it's time for us to do a little bit of Bible study. Um, today, I, or tonight rather, because it's later or much later in the evening, I am coming to you from my home in Tarboro, uh, and we're going to be studying a scripture tonight from, I, from Jeremiah chapter 29, and we will begin with a word of prayer. So let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come to you from so many different places. We have within our hearts so many different concerns and, and, and uh, things that we need to do and places we need to go. We have a lot on our plate, Lord God, in, in a variety of different ways. And yet, you are one, a unity of this universe, knowing, loving, caring for us all. And so in this time of studying ancient words, we just ask your blessings, the blessings of your Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Now I'm going to read uh, to you a scripture tonight from Jeremiah chapter 29. And we looked at this scripture in a Bible study not too many months ago in, in the, uh, this series. There is a Jeremiah 29 study. I, I think if I had a moment free, I might just scroll back and see um, and, and compare this one with, uh, with that one. I would be very interested to see. But I, I want to read this scripture to you tonight. And this is um, a letter that, uh, that Jeremiah wrote on the occasion of the, uh, the very beginnings of the destruction of Jerusalem as the Babylonians had come into Jerusalem and had taken the people into exile. They had taken the king and the queen and all the, the members of the royal court and the the, the, the technicians of the kingdom, uh, all of those who knew how to get stuff done, were, were all taken and rounded up and taken into exile in Babylon. Another king was appointed to rule uh, under the king of Babylon. He went into rebellion, and upon that rebellion, the uh, Babylonians finally moved into the city and uh, destroyed it at that time in history. So I'm going to start off with Jeremiah 29, verse 1. These are the words of the letter that, and I'm reading from the King James. This is from the uh, King James Version. Uh, These are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captives and to the priests, and to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. After that, uh, Jeconiah the king, and the queen, and the eunuchs, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, and the carpenters, and the smiths, were departed from Jerusalem by the hand of Alasa, the son of Shaphan, and Gemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent unto Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon, Build ye houses, and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, 
that ye may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now that's the reading from the uh, King James Version, and I'm going to read again the same scripture. Uh, this time I'm going to read it from the um, old RSV. Um, and that one, let's see here, that's the, the RSV translation of 1949, 48, 49 in there somewhere. Um, and this again is a reading from Jeremiah 29. And you'll notice it's a little bit easier to follow and there are some major differences and we're going to look a little bit at those, at those differences. This is just more modern English. Uh, Jeremiah 29, verse 1. These are the words of the letter which Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the elders of the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jeconiah and the queen mother and the eunuchs and princes of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the smiths, had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elisha, the son of Shaphan, and Gamariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. It said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat their produce, take wives and have sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Do not let your prophets and your diviners who are among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams which they dream, for it is a lie which they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord, for thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and hope. This is the word of the Lord. Now, uh, we are going to be looking in this Bible study at all of our considerations of the future. This is a time of transition a time of transition in our country, 
a time of transition with respect to the, uh, the pandemic as more and more people are getting vaccinated, getting their first shot, getting their second shot. And we are filled with a, a sense of hope and expectation that, that it won't be too much longer that we can put this pandemic at least part way uh, behind us and, and move on into the future. But the future is uncertain. So how shall we consider the future? Well, we're going to look at these scriptures, but I also want to share some stuff with you. We're, we're, we're filming from my house, and I have a lot of stuff, okay? I have wonderful things, and uh, why not take a minute and share some of them with you, and then we can talk a little bit about how these material objects relate to the same questions and concerns that are raised um, in, these, in these scriptures. So what we're going to do next is um, I want to start off with giving you some idea of where I got the idea for this Bible study. Am I still in frame? Barely. Barely. Okay, yeah. let me back up a little bit. Um, the, uh, I, I was looking at this picture on the wall um, and, and thinking about it this week and thinking about the future and all the troubles that may be attendant upon the future and the ways that we think about the future and the anxieties we may hold towards it and all of our feelings as we look um, at that. So I'm going to take you to the past. Let's go back 245 years ago. And we'll just pan around here to this, um, this picture that is on the wall. Okay. Uh, this is an original print by Giuseppe Vasi, um, and uh, Giuseppe, uh, Giuseppe Vasi was an Italian printmaker and, and artist, and he did this print in 1765. It's a, a hand-colored print showing the layout of Rome, uh, from a vantage point not far from the Vatican in 1765. And it is uh, a magnificent depiction um, as uh, this is St. Peter's Basilica up here. This is the Castella San Angelo here. And we're going to come into this bridge. And we're going to zoom into this bridge and I want you to see these guys right where my finger is, right there, okay? And you just move slowly right in there. And you will see an image there of some travelers. You will see an image of uh, a carriage and a driver. You can't quite see the horses below the rails of the bridge, but three footmen um, um, on the back of the carriage. Got a nice shot of that. Okay, now we're going to pan out. And um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sit back down for a second and, and uh, before we go on to the next three objects um, and tell you a little bit about that little image there um, and, and how that image connects to the past, the present, and the future. Um, in the, in, the, in the 1700s and, and all the way back through the 1600s, 1500s, 1400s, 1300s, going all the way back into the past, traveling was an extraordinarily dangerous thing to do. And Europe... See, 1765, that's 11 years before the American colonies declared their independence from Britain. Um, and in that time, Europe was fairly divided in empires and kingdoms and national allegiances, regional allegiances of rulers and traveling was quite difficult. Now, when you take a look, if you scroll back or, or rewind on the, um, 
um, on the video, I want you to think about a wealthy individual who may have needed to come from France down to Rome. Say he had to come from Paris to Rome in 1765. Let's say he needed an, a papal indulgence. That was routine business. Uh, wealthy individuals sought papal indulgences, and that meant that they would bring a gift of money to the church, and in exchange for that gift, they might receive an indulgence uh, in the form of um, perhaps a uh, uh, allowing uh, an, the annulment of a marriage or some other transaction that the church uh, very heavily regulated. So you had a chest, and in that chest was um, a, a small pile of, of gold coins, and you needed to take that small chest of gold coins down to um, Rome to, to uh, present it to the uh, officials of the Vatican, of the, of the Holy Father. Uh, if you were prominent, you might even have an audience with the Holy Father, and you had to make this journey. Um, today, if, if we had a similar situation today, you'd write a check and put it in the mail. Or if, uh, if, if you really wanted to deliver something of physical value, like a chest full of gold, UPS, right? You know, I think uh, United Parcel Service has an ultra-secure uh, uh, shipping um, arm. Uh, I believe that, that uh, FedEx has another ultra-secure shipping arm. The various uh, post offices and other uh, agencies that exist so that your package could be sent from Paris to Rome. Really, a piece of cake happens all the time. In fact, you could send it from Tarboro, North Carolina, to Paris or Rome or wherever you wanted, and the chances are that it would get there. Well, in 1765, the situation was nowhere near that secure, okay? Uh, you better hope that those three footmen clinging to the back of your carriage were well-armed, that they had swords and muskets, and that they knew how to use them, because the odds were you'd probably get robbed along the way. And maybe not even make your trip. So, you know, a, a really true wealthy lord of, of Europe at that time wouldn't even try it. He would get one of his employees to do it for him so that if the guy got killed, um, you know, he'd get another one. Um, so it was a dangerous and difficult time. Today, totally different. Past, present, and then comes the future. And the future is oh so difficult to ponder. So I'm going to wrap up. This is the end of part one here. I've gone about 16 and a half minutes and I'm going to pick up looking at the future now. We're turning from the past to the future. I've got several tools here that we're gonna use to see if we can uh, divine the future. So join us for part two.